while the nation has endured one of the worst economic downturns since the Great Depression. Despite recent encouraging signs, diminishing taxable values and declines in state revenues promise to make economic recovery a long and tough road. However, the city of Southfield has directly addressed these economic challenges through a unity of purpose, built upon a foundation of careful strategic planning and principles in leadership. These qualities have helped the city maintain its fiscal strength, stability, and support despite an ever-changing economy. Hello and welcome to the special 2012-2013 budget edition of the Teen News. The state and the country continue to struggle with a sluggish economy. While decreasing unemployment figures and strong auto sales hint at a slow but future recovery, numerous studies project that there will be at least two more years of declining tax base and revenue with no level until the 2014-2015 fiscal year. Though certainly no one could have foreseen the magnitude of the Great Recession, with foresight and long-range vision, Southfield prepared for economic storm winds in advance. In 2004, City Council enacted a renewable five-year strategy that enabled it to positively address an anticipated period of economic downturn. The five-year plan has been modified, revised, and extended, and has resulted in no layoffs, service disruptions, or reduction in high-quality city services. This has empowered Southfield to function at a high level despite unprecedented tax base erosion that began in 2009 and has continued for four successive years, a first in the modern day history of the city. Despite its past success and possibility of a future economic recovery, Southfield does not rest on its laurels. The city continues to confront the economic realities of today through a spirit of shared sacrifice with a focus on remaining strong during these uncertain times. This focus can only be attained through unity of purpose, a cooperative alliance between all city stakeholders, such as elected officials, employees, residents, advisory boards and commissions, schools, and the business community, with a view to creating sustainable solutions. The following are some areas where the city is doing just that. In a tough economic climate where layoffs are often common practice for managing extreme budget shortfalls, Southfield has managed to avoid layoffs through a managed attrition program enacted in 2004 that has reduced the total labor force by over 200 positions, or 25%. City Council facilitates the do more with less approach by ensuring that existing city staff receives final cross training, employs new technology and process improvements, and are organizationally configured to maintain high quality service levels. These efforts have created a new kind of city employee, one who must wear multiple hats and perform multiple job functions, be efficient and well versed in emerging computer technologies, and deliver high quality services whether working out of the field or in an office environment. City Council, Mayor's Office, and Administration continue to relentlessly pursue organizational efficiencies and refinements that ensure high quality service delivery despite the job being done with fewer people. These productivity initiatives have yielded results as the city has enjoyed a high quality work product by its employees under some of the highest staffing conditions in the modern history of the city. The proposed general fund budget at $66.7 million is down $1.7 million, or 2.5%, from last year's already reduced total. The general fund budget allocates $39.3 million, or 59% of public safety, by far the largest single category of general fund expenditure. The total budget at $146.2 million is essentially flat last year and is down $588,000 when adjusting for new additional federal grant funding for our neighborhood stabilization program. Public safety is a universal concern of municipalities around the country. Southfield continues to place a premium on safety and security by ensuring that its police department is well trained, well equipped, and highly professional. Its community policing initiative positively impacts the social welfare of the city by addressing unsatisfactory conditions and behaviors before they develop into criminal matters. 
city council, and the mayor's office assist the police by monitoring social conditions and national trends and creating legislation that protects the city from harmful social elements. Legislation recently enacted by city council prohibiting the sale and distribution of synthetic marijuana, otherwise known as K2 and Spice, and bath salts are examples of Southfield taking a proactive approach to making the city safe and secure. The 46th District Court, located on a municipal campus, plays an important role in public safety and commerce, and the city looks forward to a continued positive relationship with the court. High quality training and professionalism are also clearly evident in the fire department. Southfield offers top notch fire services with low fire incident rates due to strict fire codes, education, and fast response times. Both police and fire departments enjoy three to four minute response times to emergency calls, some of the best in the region. Despite continuing economic challenges, Southfield residents can count on first class emergency services. An effective budget ensures the functionality of vital life systems such as water, sewers and roads, and goes beyond the operating needs of today and addresses longer term needs. Despite scarce road revenues, the city has ignored infrastructure and capital improvement projects involving facilities, roads and bridges, plus water and sewer upgrades. Infrastructure investments are up nearly $2 million, or 25%. 20 projects totaling $10 million in 2012-2013 versus 18 projects totaling $8 million in 2011-2012. The city has aggressively pursued and maximized outside federal and state dollars for sorely needed road and infrastructure improvements. An enduring touchstone in Southfield is the presence of the business community which provides over 65% of the city's tax base. Southfield is redevelopment ready and open for business. City leadership, along with the Chamber of Commerce and our business development team, remain strongly committed to attracting new business and employment opportunities to Southfield. This helps offset declines caused by state, federal, and global economic conditions beyond our control. There have been numerous grand openings and ribbon cuttings taking place in emerging business corridors throughout the city in recent months. Some of the grand openings include 1 800 Law Firm, Fishman Insurance, Harper DMC, Legal Shield, and the Neptune Society. There continues to be significant public and media interest in the opportunities available for healthcare related development in the city. Anchored by Providence Hospital and Oakland Regional Hospital, Southfield has an emerging health care corridor that recently added the Southfield Urgent Care Facility. Recent redevelopment projects also signal a resurgence of the manufacturing sector in Southfield, such as automotive suppliers and minimum, international automotive components, advanced auto parts, and three-point machining. This past year has also seen state-of-the-art investment and expansion of the Southfield Chrysler Jeep, Tamara Honda, and Sarah Chevrolet dealerships. In addition to business attraction and retention, Southfield leadership also realizes that job growth is an absolute necessity for the region's economic comeback. The city has fought for funding of the Michigan Works Career Center, which serves Southfield and other adjacent communities and helps the unemployed and underemployed to find jobs or to qualify for higher paying careers. In the last year, the Career Center has assisted Southfield employers such as Clear, Denso, Kamal, Computer Facility Integration, Secure 24, and Landon IP with filling and employment openings. The city has also utilized partnerships with the Southfield Chamber of Commerce, Southfield Veterans Commission, Career Center, state agencies, and educational institutions to host numerous job fairs job recruitment seminars, and informational workshops for the community. Southfield continues to do its part to ensure that the city maintains its status as the office capital of southeastern Michigan and a model for creating job growth. Southfield leadership realizes that in order to remain a first-class city, it must showcase quality educational opportunities within the city. In addition to being the Center for Business in Southeastern Michigan, 
Southfield is now an educational hub for an emerging college and university district anchored by Lawrence Technological University and various specialized training facilities and regional learning centers of the University of Phoenix, Central Michigan University, Sienna Heights College, Wayne State University, Oakland Community College, and DeBron University. The Southfield Public School System is awaiting milestones in educational achievement this year. Collectively, Southfield Public School students earned $11.6 million in college scholarships. 94% of the graduating class of 2012 plan to pursue post-secondary educational opportunities at colleges, universities, or specialized vocational institutions. During these challenging economic times, the Southfield Public Library has stayed committed to being a source for information, education, and entertainment for families. The Southfield Library is a trendsetter of the region and conveys the importance of Southfield places on learning, literacy, and education in the community as it provides patrons with one of the finest public libraries in the nation. In the past year, the library welcomed over 700,000 guests in the stores. City officials and library staff embrace computer technology, such as downloadable audiobooks for iPods and MP3 players, and e-books for iPads to enhance research options for Southfield Library patrons. The Southfield Library also presents numerous educational, children and teens, music, historical and cultural arts programs that enhance the cultural fabric of the community. The foreclosure crisis has been a nationwide state of emergency for many families who have been driven away from their homes. City leadership has taken a unified approach to aggressively fight the foreclosure crisis and repopulate the state through programs such as the Neighborhood Stabilization Program, or NSP, and other residential initiatives. NSP is designed to acquire and redevelop vacant and foreclosed properties that might otherwise become sources of abandonment and flight. NSP utilizes federal funds to purchase foreclosed or abandoned homes and to rehabilitate, resell, or redevelop these homes in order to stabilize neighborhoods and still the decline of house values in neighboring homes. The program has met its financial grant acquisition commitment goals and has generated over $4.5 million in reinvestment dollars for the community. NSP is not a handout, but rather a hand up to assist working families to secure the American dream of home ownership. The city, in collaboration with Freddie Mac, has annually sponsored a real estate open house, an initiative targeted at reducing the number of vacancies in Southfield. Numerous homes were listed for sale and aggressively marketed to area families. While Southfield looks to repopulate and fill vacant homes, it continues to take necessary steps to avoid neighborhood flight. Southfield recognizes that in order to generate value in the community, it must put a priority on appearance. City leadership has taken a strong stance on protecting its physical appearance and curb appeal. Superior appearance standards begin right in our front door, the south of the municipal complex. The city grounds feature perfectly manicured, artfully designed landscape spaces by our Park Service employees. These spaces have garnered accolades from city residents and outsiders and have served as a benchmark for overall Southfield appearance standards. Unity of purpose can be seen in the city's approach to maintaining Southfield's high appearance with even more emphasis on positive citizen participation. The Eyes on the Southfield Community Appearance Hotline enables residents to actively promote curb appeal efforts through an effective reporting and monitoring mechanism. Residents and business people can call the Eyes Hotline at 248. 796 I or 3937 to anonymously report appearance problems of any kind immediately. Residents may also report appearance issues electronically by going to the City of Southwood website under the Code Enforcement page. There they can fill out the interactive complaint form. City staff diligently responds to each concern in a timely manner to ensure a more coordinated effort to maintain community appearance. The Code Enforcement and Community Appearance Division graciously yet aggressively extends a helping hand 
with the goal of achieving voluntary compliance and conformance to the city's tiered standards. In affiliation with the Michigan Works Career Center, funds have been allocated to incorporate summer jobs for you, the work of Tandem, the Code Enforcement, and Community Appearance Division staff to aid in litter disposal, vacant property upkeep, sidewalk, and bike path programs on a rotating basis throughout the summer season. The city has also tightened its cost recovery procedures aimed especially at owners of vacant homes or buildings. If a property is not maintained, the city will proactively mow lawns and maintain other code standards and build a property owner, person, bank, or etc. Through its human services division, the city also incorporates numerous confidential, culturally sensitive outreach programs and social services intended to directly address various concerns before they become police or court matters. The city has aggressively pursued grant acquisition to fund these vital programs that contribute to the emotional welfare of Southwood residents. These efforts reflect a commitment to maximizing preventive programs and improve the quality of life within the community. Southwood places a heavy premium on cultural arts and has utilized community partnerships that help offset the cost of cultural events and programming. The Southfield Parks and Recreation Department presents numerous programs throughout the year that provide a sense of community, education, and fun for the whole family. Other city venues, such as the Year of the League Baseball Field, the Southfield Sports Arena, and the Bird Gazebo offer recreational opportunities for seniors, teens, and special needs individuals. The city also presents other signature events, such as the American Cancer Society, the Way of Life, the Parks and Recreation Wellness Club, Bird Gazebo Concerts, Eat to the Beat Music Series, and the two-day into the summer Sumor Fest, which blend family-style fitness and recreation with outstanding community causes. City officials have worked in concert to support upgrades to reconfigure and renovate PNR-related landmarks such as the pool and sports arena. The pool incorporated two interactive water features, a climbing wall, and new tiling, lighting, fixtures, and flooring for the pool restrooms inside the arena. The renovations enhance family experiences at the pool with clean, updated shower areas and eye-catching features. The newly renovated pool area complements the PNR tennis courts, volleyball areas, and sports arena creating an impressive array of first-class recreational facilities. The Parks and Recreation Department also oversees the TOS, or Transportation and South Seniors Program, an initiative that has dramatically impacted the quality of life of area seniors. The program accommodates physically challenged seniors by transporting them and living with vans to various medical appointments, grocery, and personal duties activities. Economic realities have necessitated the city adopting an all-hands-on-deck mentality and fully utilizing its human capital. Southfield looks for input from everyone, and residents have responded by volunteering to sit on over 30 different boards and commissions that serve as technical and advisory bodies to the city. Residents who volunteer their time are partners in ensuring the financial, cultural, and aesthetic viability of the city. Southfield does its due diligence when it comes to its goods and services. The city meticulously employs a rigorous purchasing procedure to ensure that Southfield gets the utmost value out of its municipal goods and services while saving money. Now, let's take a look at how the new budget's delicate balance impacts the individual Southfield homeowner as the city continually strives to deliver excellent services at a fair price. Although the city collects and processes total property taxes, only about 40 cents on the dollar is destined for city operations. Most of that tax dollar, approximately 60 cents, goes to other taxing authorities for educational purposes and to provide for county services. The South of the property owner whose home has a market value of $100,000 and a taxable value of $50,000 will provide $1,186. This breaks down to $843 for police and fire and EMS, $88 for parks and recreation, 
$86 for roads and appearance programs, $140 for the library, and $29 for all other city functions. In total, this amounts to about $3.25 per day for the full array of quality services. Taxable values to support city services are down 11% for fiscal year 2012-2013. That is on top of a 13% dip the previous fiscal year. All told, this translates to roughly 64 cents to work with today compared to 1,000 four years ago. These declines in property values are unprecedented in the city's 54-year history and have been simply beyond anyone's ability to predict. The financial forecast is both daunting and sober. According to indicators in Lansing, state shared revenue city's second largest general revenue fund source, though improving in 2012-2013, is still down over 40% from the 2001-2002 high point. South of leadership has maximized revenue generation opportunities at the state level. In the past year, the city was successful in meeting the requirements of the state's new economic vitality incentive program, also known as EVIP and receive the maximum possible statutory revenue sharing allocation under the program. The city was able to point to over 100 previously existing or new cooperative programs between Southfield and other governmental jurisdictions or agencies. It is anticipated that property valuation declines will hopefully bottom out in 2014-2015, and the city will begin a slow climb upward in 2015-2016. Southfield must continue to adhere to a strict spending diet, as well as seek to build a tax base and explore revenue improvements in accordance with its long-range plan. City leaders set the tone and are committed to ensuring that Southfield remains a community of excellence where business, education, and culture can thrive. Southfield is equipped to meet these challenges and more through its unity of purpose an approach that will empower it to be the engine that is a major force in fueling the comeback of the region today, tomorrow, and beyond. That wraps up our special 2012-2013 City Budget Edition of 15 News. Thank you for watching.
department and all those things. We're done this budget. Uh, my compliments. It's just a great job. Yeah, I'd like to uh, add my compliments to this. Uh, I think this budget presentation is probably the finest uh, video that we've ever seen. Uh, and I'm sure it was under trying conditions because uh, we're under financial constraints. But they did a, the Cable 15 did a magnificent job in presenting our story. And uh, I would dare say that our story will challenge any other community around here uh, getting the word out to their citizens and, and their residents about uh, what's going on in their community. So, my hands off. Thank you. Yes, I just wanted to add a few items too that I'm um, proud to be a part of this team uh, here in the city of Southfield uh, passing a balance budget and really it was distinctly shown in this video. And I do want to encourage the residents here and the residents at home that when this is uploaded probably on the, on the YouTube page of, of the city or on the Facebook page, it's important to share this. It's important to you know use social media to show everybody in the, in the surrounding areas that we are a strong community. We continue to, to meet and face the challenges so we can do our own uh, good uh, message uh, getting out there uh, for the city uh, by sharing this information once it's posted online and letting people know how strong the city and the community we do live. Thank you. Thank you. This uh, this budget, as in years, a few years, but we've been in this economic challenge has not been one that a lot of pushed back a lot of thoughts. I want to thank the staff of, uh, of the city for uh, we used to say doing more with less, um, but but really showing up and, and contributing in the economy. We are. Uh, hopeful that we have hit bottom, and that sounds like a negative term, but in these tough economic times, to actually level off, where we're not spinning down into the positive thing, and we can start building up. And, uh, uh, two things I just want to highlight, and that's the investment in our infrastructure, and investment in currency. Uh, those are things that we see every day as a city, and as residents going through the city, and we fixing the roads, are we uh, responding to water main breaks, are we mowing, are we plowing the, the streets. And those are things that are um, 
I was that age. And um, I was talking about, I'm still, after 38 years, discovering little streets and little places that are so picturesque and so beautiful and so surprising for a city that's only 26 square miles. Um, looking at this video, it's, it's amazing how beautiful this city is. You can see it all at one time, and it's just absolutely lifts your spirit. I'm proud to live here. Everyone that lives here should be proud to live here. Um, and I want to continue on what a few people have said. We, our staff, you should be so proud of the staff. They are doing so much and working so hard. And our city administrator, she lives here. I hate to say that, but this man puts his wife's blood into this city. And when I say he lives here, I mean in this building. He is, I'm trying to tell him to take a day off now and then to go somewhere. He just goes right over his head. He's so committed. And our staff is like that. Every single one of them. We should be so proud to live in the city and so grateful that these people care. And we care. We're not here for the fun of it. We're here because we care about the city and it's our home and we want it to succeed and we're fighting to make sure it does. So I just want to thank everybody that's come here tonight. All of the work that the staff has done and uh, especially the city right here and the people department for everyone you know, to put together this, this video and this whole budget. It's been a uh, you couldn't even believe the work that I've got into this, but I'm so proud of them and I'm all confident in this Mr. Chairman, this is one item. Yes, Mr. Chairman. And it's very important that it be stated that uh, we always talk about you know, what we have as far as services and amenities, but it's very important that we state that safety and security of our residents and our business community to come and go out of this community is, is first priority. And if you look at the general fund budget, almost forty million dollars of a sixty-six million dollar budget is spent on public safety. Mm -hmm. So we have no way in no way taken away from the security and safety of this community and never will be. And uh, everything said and done is correct. But let, let me tell you something. Because of the expertise of our budget director, Jim Charette, we are on sound footing, which I believe. And I believe we have a bright future for ourselves. And uh, there isn't much more to say. We, we're proving it. We're proving it. Everything shown in that video is going to come true, and it's true. So we are doing well in spite of the all the problems that, that, that arise every day. But we are going to be okay. We're going to be a great city we are. And how much more can you say? You're going to see us. Thank you. All right, that will conclude this portion. Um,